All right, let's look at another course, um, Food Science and Nutrition. Arlene is a, an instructor that we've worked with um, before in um, our workshop series that we've had. And um, she's gone from Blackboard to PolyLearn in this class that she teaches. I think this is the online class that she was teaching in, in Blackboard. Um, so she has put in a quote on the top, um, and that's done from that edit summary to have a little welcome information there. And then she's added her syllabus with the add file, so add resource file. She's created a folder and then placed files within that. So if you have a lot of files, for example, like readings, this is a great way of putting all the readings for week one into one area. And I've also done something similar to that in my class. Um, so I have uh, a title called, or a, a label is what PolyLearn calls it, called Lecture. And then I've added a folder for optional readings. So I have these three things they need to read um, or have access to for the lecture. But then if they have um, other things they want to read about it, a little more information, optional, then you can go to this section and um, I can put as many items in this optional readings as I want. Um, so let me, um, yeah, so I wanted to show you this. This is how a student sees it. Um, so lecture and then online readings and assignments. And each section has lecture and online reading and assignments. I'm still working on this course. Um, but folders can be very helpful, as you can see here in, um, in this Food Science and Nutrition. So she's got a couple files. But you can put as many files as you want in a folder. Um, so she has an image that she's aligned to the right and an image that's just aligned left. But I also want to show you this. So I'm going to scroll down her class a little bit here. You can also, in the edit summary, embed videos. Um, so if I click on this, I'm not quite sure how this will show up in here. Um, but dinner in half a minute. How about the last minute? <laughs> dinner party with 300 people. What about... Okay, so this is a YouTube video. This actually resides in the YouTube system, but in the edit summary section, you can embed YouTube videos into your course so the students can play them, uh, pause them, rewind them, watch them as many times as they want, and you're not making them go to YouTube because sometimes YouTube can be um, overwhelming and, and cause a user to spend a lot of time looking at all the other videos in YouTube. Um, but then you can place the one video you're interested in them watching for this week uh, in your edit summary. Um, so she's also got this other one here and this one here. Um, so you can add um, your, your um, YouTube videos, embed those into your course. Now how would you do that? Um, again, this is all in the edit summary and every single one of these content blocks has one. So if I wanted to put a video in my course, I would go to my edit summary um, block and place that there. Now, if for some reason you can't remember what we just did, I'm going to go back to the support site and show you this. This is a really user-friendly um, page. If you're going to add media to your course, I recommend you look at this on a regular basis. Um, so on the bottom of the faculty support section of the support site, down here under resource file media, click on the media part because you can add files like docs and PDFs and Excel files and so on, but when you're adding media, audio or video type files, um, then you're going to want to make sure that you follow this um, scenario. And the reason why is like, it, and it seems funny, you know, if I'm adding an MP3, what's the difference in an MP4 or a WAV or um, Lou Amphos, my coworker, uh, spent a lot of time trying to figure out this because unfortunately, um, each file is going to display just a little bit different in your PolyLearn course, and she found that each file needed just a, um, a different setting. So you can place it in, but if it's not viewing the way you want it to, if you look at this, so for example, if you wanted to insert a MP3 file, um, the biggest thing to be aware of is this. Under 11 where it says display option, this is the important part is it, depending on the file type, you need to make sure you click on the correct display option so that the file will actually be viewable and, dis, and either um, listened to or viewed by the student. Um, so audio or video file. So these are really important um, settings that you need to use for each particular one. Um, so embedding your YouTube files, that's the one I wanted to show you now. If I click on that, um, how to embed your YouTube files. 
Um, so what you do is you go to a, a, a YouTube site, you find the video you're interested in, and when you find the video you're interested in, you click on the share button underneath it, and then the embed button, and then that is the, the HTML text that you're going to copy and paste into your edit summary. So if I open a new tab and go to YouTube, and there's going to be all kinds of fun stuff in here. So I'm going to go to the one place I know for sure has things that I would like to look at right now for this workshop is our PolyLearn support um, channel that we have. Uh, so if I click on PolyLearn support, these are all our videos that we've created um, for our faculty and students. But um, this will be the same for any YouTube video that you want. The big thing again is that you're going to click on share underneath the video. Then you're going to click on embed. And then this is the code you want. So you would copy this code. So I'm going to copy it. And then if I go back to my course, and I'm not pasting it here because this is a, a text-based window here that makes HTML. Instead, I'm going to click on this HTML button to view HTML, and I'm going to paste it here. So I'm pasting that embed code here, and I'm going to update. Now our videos are large because we're really expecting people to be able to watch these in a browser on a fairly decent sized monitor um, and that they, we want them to be able to see what, what we're doing in PolyLearn. Um, so this size is actually too large um, to be displayed inside the course. But I just wanted to show you now if I save this, um, then it shows up in my course. So let me turn editing off just so you can see what the students see. Um, so there it is. And if it click play, then there's the video that the student's seeing um, right there in the PolyLearn course. So that's how you embed your video in your course. Um, let's look at this one, Zoology. Um, so this one doesn't have a lot of images, but I did want to show you how this was organized. Um, this was organized, so you got the title here, some basic information about the class as a whole, and then this person decided to make a title in the edit summary called Lecture Materials. So all the lecture materials are located here in this page, this little content block, block one. Then the videos for the class. Here's some videos and here's folders so they can access the videos. Next one, lab materials, folders for the lab materials, and it's separated by week one, week two, week three. Now this could be user friendly if you're just trying to provide students um, files only. You just may need to make sure they need files. But I would recommend for my example, my class here, my class has more than just files. I have files and then I might have um, an assignment. Um, so I cannot add quizzes, uh, questionnaires, assignments, discussion forums into a folder. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Um, so what I've done is on my, for the assignments they need to be doing for the week, they have an assignment that I've done, add resource um, assignment, add resource quiz, and then add a, add a resource forum. Um, so you can separate your content by using labels. And I said labels before. So how do you make a label? Let me turn editing on and scroll down. Okay, so here's another content block, content block number two. And I can add a label to my course by clicking on add resource label. And the label is another HTML block. Um, so I could say lecture. And highlight it, change the font, make it big, and so on. I can change the color and whatever. Um, so I'm going to scroll down and save changes. And here's my lecture. I lecture the label. And the cool thing about labels is if you're going to be consistent, which I recommend you are on each content block, that you can do times two. Let's say continue. I'd like to duplicate this. And I'm going to return to the course. And then I can move these things. So I'm going to click on this move button and I'm going to move it down here to content section three. Now some browsers are going to actually, um, you click on, it's like a double arrow, one up, one down, and you can click and drag this lecture label down. So you can duplicate with the times two, and then click on the move and drag the, the um, label down. So you can um, move your labels and create your setup for each content block. So that's a 
a quick way of doing that. So that's how you make a label. And then you would add your resource. So I'd add a file that would go underneath that label or I would add an assignment or something that would go underneath that label. Um, and you can also indent things too. So let me see if I can find another course that has um, indentions. Well, this one doesn't, but I also wanted to show you this course too. Here's another course that was not set up by week or topic um, in regards to 10 weeks, but broken down into main topic areas with only four main topics. So in the edit summary, you can change um, the number of topics viewed um, from 10 to 4. And the, that edit, um, I, sometimes I say summary, sorry, edit settings. So edit settings over here under settings is where you change the number of topic blocks um, or change it from topics to weeks. Um, so she changed this to four topic blocks and she has um, course information, discussion boards um, in the top block. Then she's got study guides, grading rubrics, handouts and cool microlinks and assignments. Now she's done it just a little bit different. Instead of using that edit summary, so here it is right here, she actually did add label and she typed in all the stuff in the label. So the label itself lets you do more than just type in uh, lecture notes like I did. Um, you can type as much as you want in it. And you can also put in URLs that become links. Um, and you can also add additional labels by taking text and making it bold um, like she did in the top. So let me go to the top. So this is the edit um, summary which she didn't use. Um, but she's got a label here, Welcome to Microbiology, and then she has another label which has this text here, and then she made another label with an HR. Um, so you could do that by, if I go into this one, label, add resource label. So this is my text. It can be a lot of text. I can just push my uh, line tool like this to make a horizontal rule. Um, I can do a title that I need to have bolded because I've got other stuff I want to put under it. And then maybe I'll, um, oops, there, and I want to add a bulleted list. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, so you can add more stuff. You can add images in here too. Um, so a label is just an HTML block that has a little more flexibility than just providing a label. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So see here, my text, my title, and so on. Um, so labels can be also very useful too for adding information that displays on the page. Um, let me see. I was going to see if somebody indented things. Um, and it doesn't appear that there's a whole lot of people using the indent tool. Let me see if Brian, oh, Brian did. Um, so Brian has content here and then indented content. Um, so like I was saying, when you, you can move and also um, indent. So this is the move. So if you just roll over it, it says move. Um, but you can also click on the move right. So each one of these things can be moved right or left. Now this one's already been moved once to the right, so now you have the left option too. So you can indent things, um, resources that you've added to also help with organizing your content and making it more user friendly um, for your students to view. Um, so hopefully mm, that was helpful for you in figuring out different ways that you can organize your content um, my suggestion is that you um, try to minimize um, what you put on your page. So let me turn editing off. Um, so if you have content that you can make as a PDF or something like that, that's going to be more user friendly for your student to read that large document as a PDF than it being on this page. So I, I do recommend that anything that's important um, like this, the general information about you and your office hours and how to get a hold of you and kind of a, hey, this is what you're supposed to do this week. You know, what are, what are you responsible for this week? Um, and then the other long information as, a, as an attachment um, because your page can get really, really long um, and the student has to scroll to get to everything. 
And I don't know um, if you know this, there's a couple of things that the student can do and yourself to help with um, viewing content. Um, as a faculty or a student, you can click on this little block. Um, so it's a box on the top of your content block. And this one says show only two weeks. And so our week two, I can click on that. What that does is minimize how much content shown on the page. Um, so this that that box that I just clicked shows the first block and one block underneath it. Then I have the ability to go to other blocks. So now week seven. So now there's week seven. Oh, I need to look at week two again. So I jump to week two. Um, so that's a great way to, now if I change this as the instructor, I'm not changing it for the student view, um, but as a student or an instructor looking at content, this can help you by minimizing what's on the page. Um, so each person can do that. The other thing that a person can do to help make content more user-friendly for themselves is this navigation block and setting block can be docked. So if I just roll over this, it says move this to the dock, and I click and click and see now I have a whole bunch more resource for my content. Now again if I do that it's not for the students I, it's only for my view um, so and then I can click and then the nav shows up again I can click and the settings shows up again and then if I want it back where it was with that little blue box that's kinda next to it, it says undock this item I can undock it okay um, so there's some helpful tips too. If I want to get back to all of you, I can click on that box again, and now I can see all of them. Um, so there's some things that can be very helpful for you and your students to know when navigating through this content, because it is all on one page. Uh, I'll have to tell you though, I know if you're a Blackboard user, you're thinking, gosh, I don't really like it all on one page. I, I really liked the folder setup I had in the menu system. Um, the feedback we got from students was that they preferred this, PolyLearn, because now, it, only if you organize this well, because any, any material, any, any application can be used poorly. Um, so you can just throw a whole bunch of stuff on here and no organization at all, and it just, you know, it could be just as bad as a bad Blackboard course. So what we heard, though, from students is if it was organized in a, in a, a way that is, is intuitive, like by topic or week, um, you know, this is by week and this is by topic, that's organized in a way that is intuitive to the student, user-friendly to the student, that this is a lot more user-friendly for the students to find content than Blackboard because it's one page where all the content is and not many menu items and folders and whatever in Blackboard. Um, so students prefer this. Um, so just keep that in mind while you're designing your, your PolyLearn course. Um, try to make it as clean and as organized and um, um, uh, duplicate your your setup in each content so be can um, uh, while working in your course and organize your content just make sure you're consistent throughout each content block um, so thank you very much for attending this uh, workshop on uh, organizing your polylearn course and I hope that you have learned a lot about options for organizing your course and what resources you can find to help you with that. Uh, thank you and have a great day.